What's up, everybody? It's another episode of the Comeback Podcast, and we are again. We just were on what? Fucking two, three, four. I don't know, month, two months ago, and a lot's changed, right? That's right, baby. With my man Jordan Stupart. Jordan, you know what this is all about, dude. You couldn't. I asked you a question last time. I said, "What's the next twelve months look like?" And you're fucking tight lip, didn't say a fucking word, and then all of a sudden, I, like a week later, boom, shit pops up. It's all about you, baby. I want to hear what's going on in your world. Well, uh, a, a lot has changed. Um, I made some some big moves, taking some risks. Um, you know, uh, I, people started asking me that question a lot, man, where they're like, hey, what, what's the next sec- six, 12, 12 months, 24 months look like? And it always just gets my gears spinning. And, uh, you know, I, I had I had to make a move, man. I had to do it. It was just time, huh? It was time, bro. So obviously, I love the videos. I, I kind of know I, I know what's going on. Why don't you tell the guys what's going on, what you're doing? So uh, two two months ago, uh, I resigned from my sales position um, from Cardone Training Technologies. Uh, I'd been there for about three and a half years or so, and um, took a week or two off to kind of like just check everything out, like check myself out. I slept in for once. It was kind of weird, <laughs> um, and uh, and decided to. Uh, decided to uh, open up my own company and do some business consulting and uh, and help people in a way that I feel like I can help people um, the best. So is it, are we doing sales training? Are you business, I mean, is it overall, is it giant businesses, little businesses? What's your demographic? What are you, what are you working at? So really at the end of the day, what I want to do is I want to work with millennials. Um, I love that age group of, you know, that, that, that 16 to like 35 group, whatever that deal is. I like working with those people specifically, um, mainly because they are hungry. They do want to learn. They want to find the right, like place to go to work. They, they have a lot of questions about, um, how will I be viewed by my friends or family if I decide to move? Like, how do I take risks? And um, I love doing that. I love getting, um, obviously, doing sales. Um, but really, generally, what I want to do is I want to get really involved with some specific businesses. And so I'm still kind of identifying what those businesses are. And obviously, people are talking to me. Um, but what I'm going to be doing primarily is business consulting uh, with some sales training attached to it if people have questions, of course. Yeah, dude, I love it. And I, I watched... Um... I can't remember the video that I watched. I commented on it and you commented back on me, but I actually, it was, I replayed the video that you told me I can't think of it right now in my head because it fucking helped me do something I needed to do that day. So I want to tell you, dude, the videos is gold, man. Like the stuff you're putting out there. I love the quality. It looks good. I'm pumped to watch it. Dude, I what appreciate that. You, you talked about risk. That was one of the first things you said. So let's kind of, let's do the 15, 20 minutes about risk real quick. Obviously you left grants. Let's just be honest. He's fucking huge. Right. And he's, Got some massive. good shit going on. He's, he's massive. He's a master. He's great at what he does. And you took a giant risk. Obviously, you were there. You were right. One of the first things you told me when I met you in the dealership at CUNAS was we were talking about social media. And you're like, man, I, you know, I get a guy like Grant to blaze a trail in front of me and I'm able to gain followers and open up that way. But now you're on your own. Now you're doing some things and you've been recognized. Like, dude, you got thousands of people like that follow you and shit, right? Yeah. Talk about that risk. Were you nervous about making the switch? Yeah. I mean, Taking taking a jump like that was the scariest thing I've ever done, and 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 frankly, I I didn't know if I had the balls to do it until I actually did it. Um, I, I live in a marina, and so off my balcony, um, there's probably I don't know forty different boats, and they range from like little boats to like eighty, ninety, hundred footer like sick multi million dollar yachts, and every single time I look down at those yachts. Um, I, I, I recognize one thing. Those are people with the big yachts, the big money, the, the expensive cars here. Uh, those are people that took a risk. They may not be the most successful people. They may not be the most talented people. They may not be the most educated people, but what they are is they're people that said, dude, I have to do something big and I'm going to take a risk. And those are people that were just successful doing what they did. So looking down there every single day, um, I wanted to take a risk. Now, the risk that I took obviously was was gigantic for a reason. Is over the last couple of years, I've made well over a million dollars in commissions. I kind of had it made. Uh, I'm one of the original kind of sales guys. I had my group of people. I had a normal. I, I can do whatever it is that I want to do. I can eat whatever I want to eat. I can drink whatever I want to drink. I can afford basically 
the things that are like kind of at this level of making 400, 500 grand a year. And I talk to people, other business owners all the time that have the Ferrari that I want to drive, that have the things that I want to do. And they all told me, look, you need to scale yourself. And so I was like, you know what? I got to do it. And the reason why this decision was so hard is because I was probably on track to make, I don't know, 600, 750,000 bucks this year. And I left it all on the table and took a massive pay cut. In fact, I haven't made a dime in the last 60 days. I'm just sitting over here spending money, man, like blowing it on building a business. So it's scary. How's that feel for you? Because I, I did the same thing a while back, right? You know, I wasn't making on track to make 750 selling cars, but I just said fuck it and walked away and I did well creeping up towards 300, but that was selling cars, right? Yeah. But I went in to sell this new product. And I ju- you know the deal. I jumped into the space. I decided I was going to start doing something. I couldn't even get 49 fucking dollars at, at first, right? For the shit. I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do here? But I stayed at it. I stayed at it. I stayed at it. How's your mind right now when you know, because let's be honest, we both love money. I know you love money. We like to make it. How are you dealing with that right now? Like not making cash. Does it fuck you up? It it kind of does. Like some someday, like this morning I woke up at 4 a.m. I'm with my girl and I, I like throwing covers around. Like I'm literally going from, from dead sleep to like 150, dude. Like I just went straight there. And it's like, I need to go out and kill something. I need a deal. I need like, I don't care if somebody gives me a dollar. It's like, all right, I got me a dollar now, you know? But um, at the end of the day, um, I knew exactly what I was doing with my cash, my savings, blah, 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 um, investing in, in my company. And what I love to see is I love to see what I'm able to do with my own capital and like what it's starting to actually build. And, um, you know, I can't tell all my secrets just yet before releasing everything, but I'm building something like unbelievable uh, that I feel will be a, a game changer in the whole business consulting, sales training um, arena. And I'm really excited about it. Let's talk real quick about um, when you were working at Grant Stuff, the, the backlash maybe of leaving there. I'm not, not talking about him or whatever, but going from being like being the guy and you were there and you're awesome to all of a sudden your audience, has anyone, have you got any haters? Here? No, I, actually it's, it's pretty, it's been pretty phenomenal to see most people, like even people that I wasn't really, interacting with uh when i was working there that kind of like popped out and were like hey by the way you know i've been kind of watching your journey over the last couple years i know we have never talked or whatever but really support what you're doing it's really freaking dope um but ultimately man like i would say almost a hundred percent of people that i've talked with on my snapchat instagram social whatever that have called me have all been really positive and i think more than anything, what I've done so far is I have inspired other people where who are have we're wearing golden handcuffs like I was. Right. You know, like dude, how how do you leave 500 grand on the table every single year at a young age when you can do whatever the hell you want to do? You don't do it. But you don't do it unless there's something great waiting for you and I knew that there was and so I took off the golden handcuffs and walked. But the truth is you can I mean, I get it. I understand the marketplace. I know what I'm building. I know where you're going to go. I mean, obviously, I, I, there's not a doubt in my mind you're going to be fucking highly successful. So you might have left 500000 to be able to make a million quickly, right? So exactly. exactly. I, I see the vision. I see what you're doing, and I fucking support you 100%. I want to ask you a question real quick, um, a sales question about one of my guys right now. He's got a – I know how I would answer it, but I want to get your opinion on it. So a bunch of people set appointments with him, and they want to talk to him, and then he gets on, and they're fucking hanging up on him. What's your, what's your reply for that? Would you text them? Would you call? This is just a sales random question. I just thought about it. How would you deal with them? So just to make sure I'm clear, this guy's scheduled an appointment. The person's actually showing up and then they hang up on him during the appointment. Yeah. Or or they want to talk to him and he gets on the phone, they answer, then they fucking click off. I've been there. I've been, I've been there a lot. So as, as early on in the sales process or my interaction with somebody, one of the things I want to do is I want to get a cell phone number. The reason being, hold on, been having my my throat deal. The first thing I want to do is I want to send, uh, I want somebody's cell phone number so I can do a selfie video. And I know that you do that. I know it's something that you probably train people to do too. Um, and so what I would do, probably this is going to be a similar answer to you, um, is I'm going to, 
if somebody hangs up on me or they blow off my meeting or whatever, um, I want to do like a FaceTime call or I want to do a, a video message and let them know, hey, man, you know, I'm a real human being. Like I showed up here. I have my Red Bull right here. I have, you know, I got my boss over here breathing down my neck to get more appointments and close deals. I was just hoping you'd maybe show up. Right. And I'm going to shoot that out because I think that human interaction, I think it can say a lot to somebody where they can text back and say, hey, you know, look, my bad or I had an emergency or or whatever. Well, themselves, sometimes I find that they have to click off. One of the things that I do is be like, hey, bro, I get it, man. Maybe I'm not for you, but you don't got to fucking hang up on me. I am a human being, right? I'll shoot that text back. I'll kind of put them on the yeah. spot or whatever. Because don't, yeah, if you're going to go. I got feelings, bro. Yeah, bro, you're fucking hurting me here. Come on, man. I got, and you, like, you can say, I got a kid relying on me, you know, like, I don't have that luxury yet, but. <laughs> but my guy's got like four kids relying on him. So that's a good one. I'll tell him to use that one. That's great. There you I want go. to talk real quick about what I see. Cause I do, like I said, man, you're one of the dudes I follow. I consider you my friend. We're Wisconsin boys. Um, your chick, she seems to be instrumental in this shift that I've watched over the past year of like from when I met you to where you're at now. How's the support there, man? I know you were just at her, uh, her graduation and all that stuff, but it looks like you guys are super solid and it's really, she's pushing you, huh? Yeah. Big time, man. Like, um, you know, they, they always tell you that the right person will push you and, and make you better and stuff. And I never really realized what that meant until it happened. And so Athena is, is amazing. She's pushed me so, so far in such a short period of time and kind of like allowed me to change on my own terms. She's not like trying to like, put my head in the water and be like, change motherfucker change. But she is like showing me like what things could be like if you did change, like, and she's just really supportive. Um, I'm super supportive of her. We're trying to be a power couple for real uh, because I think there's a lot of fake ass power couples out there that just use that hashtag, man. And I don't think, I don't think it's useful for most folks. I'm with you, man. I just, I just think it's great. It's cool to see. And I love the fact you fly all over the country to do what you got to do to take care of her, man. So just keep that up. Um, That's right. A couple, couple things here real quick and I'll get off because we got some shit to do. Um, you said you made a video saying you were the top percentage of all income earners in the United States. Let's talk about that so people understand. A lot of times I think people think they need to make 1 million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million, right? They get so caught up. They, like, I, I know that I want to make that kind of money. But what does the top percentage look like for you? And, and what is that? Is, is it 400,000? Is it 300,000? 500,000? What would a person's life be like to make that type of money? Yeah, man. So um, the the top 1%, I believe, in America is is like 430 grand or something like that in a year. That goes for the whole country. Obviously, making 450 grand in Miami is a little bit of a different lifestyle than making 450 grand in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, no, you don't need to make a million bucks. You don't need to be a billionaire to, uh, to enjoy things. Like there's things that I can do making 400 grand a year that, you know, are the same exact things that most millionaires do. We eat at the same places uh, we drink the same wine. We eat the same steaks. We all drive same level of car. Like the difference between the 400 grand and a million really honestly isn't a ton of it's it's a lot of money, but it's really not a different shift in your lifestyle. It's not really going to put you in the way bigger house. It's really not going to buy you the extra exotic car. Like it's just kind of extra cash. You know, it's extra capital. And so it's important, like if you're making 50, if you're listening to this right now, making 50 grand a year, 75 grand a year, like, look, it's really, really important to develop the mindset that that's not a lot of money. Like 500 grand is not a lot of money either. A million dollars is not a lot of money either. What we need to do is we need to figure out where I'm at right now. And this is what I challenge myself to do every day, where I'm at right now and where I ultimately want to be. For me, this is honestly how I looked at everything before I left the office that I worked at is in 2013, I made $42,000. In 2014, I made uh, like 82 or something like that. I doubled it basically. Then suddenly in 2015, I made $373,000. And then last year in 2016, I made $452,000. And what I want people to understand is that that type of growth over three or four years 
is something that usually people just kind of plateau on and they're like totally settled with. Because I'm going to tell you the difference between making 450 grand a year and 4,500 bucks a year or $45,000 a year is enormous. Okay. It is a total life change. However, most people get stuck at this 450. What I wanted to do, and I asked a lot of like power players, um, multimillionaires, and my old boss, I said, how do I take three years of growth like this and how do I compress that into one year? How do I do that? And every single person told me, hey, you need people dialing the phone for you. You need employees. Uh, you need people underneath you that are doing some of the grunt work so that you can do what you do best and that's pitch deals, close, whatever. And I couldn't have it that way. That is one of the main contributing reasons why um, I did what I did and I, I took the risk is because I'm not good with 450 grand a year. I'm not good with 500. I'm not, I'm not going to be good with a million when I hit a million. I want to continue growing and anybody trying to hold me back, uh, you know, their history. Stay the fuck out of it, right? Exactly. <laughs> Pretty simple. So I so talking to you right now versus what we did a month or two ago, I feel a completely different Jordan. I like this guy right now. You're like, well, like you're, you're always positive, but you're, you seem like real right now. You seem like happy. Dude, I, I, I'm, I'm really happy because I'm doing something that I want to do. I don't, you know, Eric Thomas. Yeah. Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher. He always did that thing. Like four years ago, I heard him for the first time. He's like, dude, if you need an alarm clock, you are living in hell. Like you, you let your passion wake you up. You let your motivation wake you up and you'll wake up before you ever did. These days, dude, I don't use an alarm clock anymore. Like, and I always thought it was bullshit because I'm like waking up at 5.30 or 6 to work out and then get to the office and I'm just doing this for years. And I'm like, dude, whatever he's saying is garbage about the whole alarm clock thing. Right, right. And then all of a sudden, uh, two months ago, I, I, I'm, I'm on my own terms. And these days, dude, I'm waking up at 5.30. I'm waking up at 6. I'm waking up at 4 a.m. Like lit, dude. And I'm happy about it. I'm doing something that I'm passionate about. Um, there's a ton of resistance, there's obstacles, there's challenges, and it just gives me more fuel to just like crush through all that shit because, dude, you know, li life was not made to be easy, okay? Adam and Eve, they ate the damn apple, okay? They made things tough for us. We have to deal with it, and I love overcoming challenges and obstacles because it makes me stronger, better, faster, uh, like that Kanye West song. <laughs> Where do you draw your inspiration from? Like, wh where does it come from for you? I I get my inspiration from, um, dude. I get it from being. I, I get it from from the actions that I've previously taken. I get inspiration every time I fly over the city of Milwaukee, dude. Every time I look out that airplane window, I'm like, dude, I'm gonna own that place. Every time I look at a uh, I look at a Porsche, I'm like, dude, I need I need another one. Every time I get a text message from somebody that has a sales question and I give them a quick little answer and they turn it into something great and tell me about it later on, dude, I get gassed up. But mostly I get gassed up on other people. Um, when other people are doing well, um, I love it. Whether I help them or not, like, you know, Snapchat's badass, dude. I, I got, I got a, uh, a dude a couple of days ago that had a, a $53,000 paycheck and he's like, hey, man, um, you know, this is, they told me not to get in sales, you know, and that just gets me gassed up. I'm like, I love to see other people doing well um, and, uh, and crushing it. That's awesome. So here, I'm going to get, I'm going to get off here because I got some stuff I got to do. And we're yep. there, this is the question right now. When are you coming back to Wisconsin so we can do something live together? Yeah, dude, I'll come up there just about any old time. I was, uh, let, let's shoot for a couple of weeks in July, dude. For sure. I mean, I know you like to come back periodically, but now that you're a little bit more free and shit, we could probably Dude, catch up. Can I, can I tell you something real quick? Sure. For anybody for anybody listening to this right now in a nine to five, <laughs> if you have to ask off for work and then all of a sudden you, you do an entrepreneurial type thing or something where you can have freedom. Dude, I cannot tell you how dope it is not to ask anybody, hey, I'm taking off on a Tuesday afternoon. I'm going to Wisconsin. You know, like it, it's just awesome. I love it, bro. Hit my guys with some words of wisdom, some, uh, some more positivity, then let's go crush our days.
All right, so I got my little slogan here. I'm going to drop on everybody. The slogan is don't get freaking weak. Do not get weak. When you're dealing with a challenge, you're in the close with somebody. They're giving you objections. Whether you're trying to make extra phone calls that day or extra emails or, dude, my man Mark Jennison doing some extra pumps in the gym. Dude, don't get freaking weak, dude. Do the extra rep. Do the extra set. Make the extra call. Dude, don't get weak in any part of your world. Don't eat the Butterfinger. Don't eat the Ben and Jerry's, dude. Don't talk to your ex-girlfriend when you're already dating somebody. Don't do it, man. Don't get weak. That's my deal. I love it. All right, bro. You have a good day, man. Let's stay in touch. Let's shoot for a few weeks. Do something live. Sounds good, bro. Take care. Later, brother.